the third proposition, the fourth proposition is that um, we're facing uh, people who, for their own reasons, do not want to implement these things, particularly in Australia. Um, pretty much the coalition is in bed with the energy companies and the Labor Party in bed with the energy companies and the unions, and neither of them want to do anything. But we have, do have a problem with they do have massive resources and massive expertise in managing people who uh, are pretty much ordinary citizens and for lobby groups or whatever else that very practiced in uh, putting people into boxes and <laughs> convincing them to play by their rules. Um, a very good example is the ACS. But anyway, they are Goliaths in this sort of ability, the skill, resources, and you know, talent they have available in, in you know, producing these outcomes that they want and winning in these sort of um, arguments. The conclusion that, that I come to and all this sort of stuff is we do need a David strategy. Um, there's a very interesting article that came out in the New Yorker which talks about basketball strategies but also naval military strategies and other ways in which David beats Goliath. Um, I've got a basketball background and that, that article really resonated with me, particularly as one of my daughters was in the grand final with a, a very talented and tall, very, very effective team that had gone through completely undefeated through the year, including beating our girls three times, twice in the year, once in the finals. And the, their coach gave them a very interesting instruction in the grand final, which was, you've already won, you're here. What you're very good at is running. <laughs> Harass them, run, run, run. And they got ahead of the girls, this, this opposition team for the first time, and ended up running out winning that grand final. The opposition team was so confident about victory, so confident about their you know, superior talent, which is true, superior talent, the superior basketball skills, the superior strategies, all that, that they had their big victory breakfast the morning before the game. <laughs> and when our girls won, the coach was very ungracious in defeat. I think the, the bottom line is that that last quote, I mean, that article is a very good one in the New Yorker because it talks about the strategy in many different contexts. And the quote at the end basically says, if you want to play by the game, your winning percentage is probably only down around about 28%. If you change the game, play it in a very different way with a lot of harassment, a lot of superior effort, not superior skill, then your winning percentage for a David goes up to more like two thirds. And I think that's we were at in this stage in this country that we really do need to develop David strategies to defeat the Goliath. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brian. Sorry? Um, thank you very much. We saw lots of nodding heads there with the um, David and Goliath strategy. Um, uh, I'll take some questions for you, if that's okay. Um, okay, if I, can, if I can make them out, I'll be very happy to <laughs> so answer them. Great. Has anyone got any questions? Yes, Sandy. Um, could you give another example of the David beats Goliath strategy that was effectively played out? Have you got another example of the David and Goliath strategy played out? Recently. So, so I can't make it out. What you're saying? Oh, sorry. Um, is have you got another uh, story of David and Goliath strategy being played out from recently? Um, some idea or some some. There's plenty of examples in history. I mean, the article talks about T. E. Lawrence and Lawrence of Arabia, and talks about other conflicts around the world that uh, where playing by a Goliath strategy against in defeat and playing um, against Goliath strategy leads to a much better chance of victory in many of the wars of national liberation and other other areas of of life. This is this has come up quite often. The guy I mentioned in the quote at the end there is has is the one who's done a lot of this analysis to have a look at how people have gone about this. Um, how we actually implement such a strategy, I think, has to be creative, but it has to have those sort of principles, I think. I mean, there's some very simple things that might be worth throwing in a pot. One is uh, 
the geothermal people down here um, estimate that to bring about um, uh, five megawatts online from a geothermal well would cost about thirty million dollars. Um, just doing some back of the envelope calculations, I think this would be a good return. And to, as we have this system now where we can buy our energy anywhere, I, I think it'd be rather interesting to see if we could get enough people to put up to 30 million and put in one of these wells for their own electricity station. And once one's going and making money, then and putting up a challenge to the existing uh, energy companies. So I think it'd be very interesting to see what happens from there. But if, uh, the 30 million is not a huge sum of money compared to putting up new coal-fired power stations, which our Victoria government is planning to do. So it might be a way of putting a spoke in that wheel. Yeah, and we have had a little um, discussion or, or, um, about superannuation, you know, which I, and I'm well, just we could go through superannuation and just stop people with investing things as they retire, you know, or just putting money out. But 30 million is not a lot of money, I think 20 million people. Yeah. Um, and so, I think that's uh, another another one is just that business of harassing them. You know, I, I had a sudden thought one night: Why do you harass people? In the, you know, I don't care in the coalition. Um, my dad thought one very simple one is whenever they appear anywhere in public, that people around them just point their finger at them and say, "You are the problem." <laughs> And I think I think it would have the effect, the psychological effect of of stripping away that great shield that they put up around them of you know, civil servants and you know, political minders and media people and all the rest of it. And it's not a it's not a nasty strategy, but it's a, it's certainly an assertive one. It makes it very very clear that people are not just they're not buying the rubbish, really. Yeah. And that if there's enough people doing that. It might actually do exactly the harassment that is talked about in the articles on basketball that these people ran full court presses on their opposition. So they were guarding them from the back of the court all the way down. They can just go up and play by the usual strategy of waiting for them to come down the court and set, their, their set, set up their offenses. You just keep them off balance all the time. And I think that might be something to do, you know, sort of get up or somebody yeah. to, to make it a, just a, a very personal issue. You are not delivering. Okay, um, I've got another question here. Uh, it was announced yesterday that uh, energy prices in New South Wales would be going up about 20% in the next year, starting, I think, the next quarter. Uh, so certainly you've got ideal conditions in which to, uh, I think, engender interest from the community. I'm wondering what time frame uh, is it going to be before you could, you know, implement some of these new systems. Janine, could you relay that? I, I couldn't yeah, make it out at all. Yeah, um, yeah um, New South Wales, it was announced yesterday that energy in New South Wales is going up 20% in the next year. And yeah. um, so it creates a fertile ground for people to be, to start to consider alternatives. And um, have you got any ideas around timing and how long it might take for some of these um, ideas to to get up? Look, I'm, I'm not sure. It depends on how many people are prepared to put it in. Um, it, it's, you know, the, that timeline on the US Department of Energy graph, um, in, in Australia, the um, coal companies get their coal at very, very cheap rates. So we can expect it's going to take longer for that graph to hit the bottom. Um, Given that, we've also got you know twice the sunlight per square metre of say Germany, <laughs> so we've got an advantage in being able to generate the power as well. What I don't like about the model that say Rose just put up for you know generating a solar tower, you know large scale things is, um, I really think it's a bad model. I think distributed energy under the control of a lot of people is, is the model to go for now, and um, you know a lot of people. <laughs> You know, smart grid that actually pulls energy from a lot of different places, small scale, and, you know, creation of the energy. Um, I, I'm, the timeline, I don't know. I think there's a, there's a very strong uh, sense that we're not getting what we need to get done 
in this field in Australia. I think there are a lot of people feeling this. Um, Rudd had his uh, cabinet meeting down just close to them, um, Emerald, uh, over the last couple of days, they had their cabinet here. And, um, there, was a, there was a lot of challenging of their position um, from many members of the, of the audience there. I have a sense, I don't know, but I'm going to have a sense that, there's a, that the politicians on both sides are lagging a great long way behind the community understanding of the issue and the community sentiment about it.